Okay, and we are live. So here we go. Let's launch right into it. Today, we're going to be asking the question, is God still performing miracles today? Now, first of all, I want to say that this is for my mother-in-law, who we're praying for every single day. And when you watch this, which I know that you will, we love you and we're praying for you every single day. And this is also for others who are praying for their loved ones, praying for their friends, praying for their children, their parents, whatever it is, and whatever illness it is, we are going to pray for them here. And I want to say that this is a in-house debate, okay? This is a debate between believers, between followers of Jesus Christ, and this is a minor doctrinal debate. And this video is not a debate video, and I believe that those causing division in the body of Christ who are debating this and pointing the fingers at one another, especially those who are saying that if you believe God heals today, then you're a heretic, then I believe that that is the wrong position to take. I believe that we should be in unity. And just like in Mark 9, 38 to 40, and we'll go there right now, Mark 9, 38 to 40, we see here, Jesus, teacher, John said, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Jesus said, do not stop him for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me for whoever is not against us is for us. And so here in this scripture, I am going to give you guys in this message evidence that God is still healing people today. I will give you scriptural evidence I will give you historic evidence that Jesus is still healing today. But again, this is not a debate, right? This is something that even Paul in Philippians, if we go to Philippians 1, 15 to 18, we will see here that this is Paul speaking now to the church in Philippi. He says, it is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. And then he says again, he repeats, yes, and I will continue. To rejoice. So this is not a debating issue. This is something personal. This is something that I'm creating for my mother-in-law who we're praying for right now and that I believe God will heal her. So this is specifically to those who need healing and who are praying for healing and to tell you that there is a scriptural basis for God's healing and evidence for it. And I want to talk about my personal experience as well. I've seen God heal people's brains and cancers and hearts and bodies. I've seen God heal me when doctors said certain things wouldn't be healed. God healing both my sons in the womb and out of the womb. God healing my wife. There were days when literally my son would be sick and ha having a high fever at nighttime and going to sleep and then praying over him and then him being feel healed in the morning. So First of all, it is God doing the healing, not us. And ultimately, it is to reveal his glory. And it's not something that we rejoice in, which we're going to read that text in a little bit. But it is something that we revel in, the power of God. And it's something that increases our faith. And we're going to study that today. We're going to prove that in Scripture today, that God is still healing. And prove that historically, that God is is still healing. So if you're out there and you're wondering, can God heal the situation? The answer is yes. Yes, he can. That is the truth. And he's still active today. And I want to make a point again, that it is not us doing the healing. It is God doing the healing. It is the power of God in his name. It is for his glory. And I don't believe that there is a price for healing, like some televangelists of the past who will say, hey, send our ministry money and God will heal you in this situation. I don't believe that. I don't believe that you can bribe God. He is God and he is sovereign and he will choose to heal when he wants to heal. But I'm also not saying that just because we believe that God continues to heal today, that we shouldn't seek medical advice or anything like that. I believe that science and medicine is from God and ultimately 
he's sovereign and rules over every medical practice. He rules over the hands of those doctors operating, those nurses, those medical professionals helping. And in fact, today, we wouldn't even have hospitals. Hospitals wouldn't exist if it wasn't for disciples of Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for believers of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, we would not have hospitals today. So comment down below and say, I believe if you are praying for God's healing. And when we pray for you and your family to be healed, just type amen in the comments down below. And I will pray for you and your families and your loved ones who are sick before we get into that lesson and after that lesson as well. And you just have to agree in prayer with us and type amen in the comments. Now, I want to talk about the scriptural basis for God's healing. And I want to ask that the Holy Spirit would lead this study in Jesus' name, that you would reveal your truth to us, God, in this study. And so I want to talk about the scriptural basis for that. And one, Jesus' ministry, right? So, so Jesus had a threefold ministry. One was preaching, one was healing, and one was casting out demons. And so you see in the Gospels are filled with accounts of Jesus healing the sick, casting out demons, and performing miraculous signs. You see that all over the New Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, every single one, every single gospel. And then you see the Great Commission. And in the Great Commission, Jesus instructs his disciples to go and make disciples, teaching them to obey all that he had commanded, including healing the sick, casting out demons, and preaching the gospel. And so you see here, we get off now in Luke 10. Jesus sends out 72. Now, the context of this is that before this happened, Jesus sent out the 12 to do the exact same thing. He gave them authority in his name to do this. And so we're going to read through this text. After this, we're going to say a prayer, and then we're going to go into other scriptural evidence that God is still active and healing today. And that in the situation that you're in, he has the ability to bring healing to that situation that you're in. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two, so in pairs, ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest upon them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking, whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and you are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. And when you enter a town and are not welcome, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town will we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come near. Now, I used to be one that, you know, if someone was giving me an offering for ministry, I, would, I wouldn't want to take it. But if you are serving God and someone wants to bless you, receive it because you are allowing them to bless you and God will bless them. We cannot outgive God. And if they want to serve and they want to give to the ministry of God, then you should, if you are a minister, you should freely receive that to, to not stop the blessing from them. But beyond this, let's go now to the number three point that I want to make. And that is the early church. And so we see in the book of Acts. So you see here that the 72 are being sent out, right? And some will say, okay, well, Jesus healed and cast out demons and preached, but we are not Jesus. It, it, Jesus did that, but we are not Jesus. But you see here that Jesus gave authority to the 12 disciples and then also authority to the 72 disciples. And then when we go into Acts, the early church, the first line of disciples, the first generation of followers of Jesus Christ, you see that in the book of Acts, just read it, the early church continued the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Peter and John healed a lame man. You see there in Acts 3, 1 to 10, the Apostle Paul performed many miracles of healing, Acts 19, 11 to 12. And you see even, this brings me to number four now, that in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 9, 12, 28, the New Testament epistles speak of spiritual gifts, including the gift of healing. 
And this is given to the church for the common good. And number five, this is all scriptural evidence for healing now. The New Testament also encourages believers to pray for healing. Jesus' half-brother James even says this. And so let's go here to James 5, 14, 15. And now this is this is James, the half-brother of Jesus. Is, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So we see here, that Jesus sends out the disciples to heal. Jesus sends out the 72 to heal. Jesus himself heals. The early apostles, the early church in Acts heals. Now, some will say, oh, well, after that, after the scripture was given, after the canon was given, then healing stopped. But wait, let's dig into church history. So the early church, now I'm not, I'm not talking about Acts now. I'm not talking about the epistles now. I'm talking about 69 to 155 AD, Polycarp, the disciple of the Apostle John. So there's Jesus, and then there was the Apostle John that was discipled by Jesus. And then there's Polycarp, who was now discipled by the Apostle John. He reported to have performed miracles. So we know that the disciple of the Apostle John was performing miracles miracles in Jesus name. Now we'll say, okay, well, that was 69 to 155 AD. What about afterward? Well, let's talk about Justin Martyr. Justin Martyr, one of the early church fathers, wrote about healing within the Christian community. So you see that in 100 AD, almost 200 AD, the early followers of Jesus Christ were reporting miraculous signs that people were being healed. Okay. Now you'll say, what if we go beyond that? So let's go to origin. In, in, in 185 to 254 AD, origin, another, he's another early church father, mentions healings and ongoing phenomena, ongoing miracles of healing. Now this is 185 to 254 AD. Okay, so now you say, okay, well, what, what about 300? Okay, let's go... In, into, you know, later down uh, the road. Well, there was, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this properly, but uh, Eusebius, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that's pronounced properly, but he was a historian of the early church and he lived from 260 to 340 AD. And he documented various healing miracles within the church during those first few centuries. So now we have here experiential evidence that God still heals today. We have now scriptural evidence that not only Jesus healed, but the 12 disciples healed and the 72 disciples healed. And then the early church in Acts, we have evidence that the early church in Acts healed in Jesus' name. And the early church in 100 AD was healing in Jesus' name. And the early church in 200 AD was healing in Jesus' name. And in 300 AD, the early church was healing in Jesus' name. Now, for those who say there's no more healing today, I just don't see when did it stop then? Does anybody know at 400 AD, 500 AD, it stopped when there was the Great Reformation? It stopped. We see here there's no command of Jesus saying, hey, healing will stop. And so now that we've expressed that and now that we've talked about that, oh, there's Ebro here. I just want to say a quick shout out. We got a big one. Yes, Ebro, my bro. Yes, God still performs healing miracles today. I experienced that way back in 2017 after being declared 50-50 due to Graves' pyrotoxicosis, sepsis, HPA. I remember when we talked about Gideon being called. God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies whom he calls. God empowers us. Broken vessels with purpose through and for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Absolutely, Ebro. Praise the Lord. I love that. It's absolutely true. God is healer. God still heals today. And we've gone through the evidence now of it. Now I want to go through scripture that God is healing. But before we go into the scripture, I just want to pray for healing for whatever situation that you're in. Maybe you're praying for somebody. This is, again, this is dedicated to my mother-in-law who we are praying for 
fervently. And I know the churches that we are associated with are praying fervently. Hillcrest Family Life Baptist Church at Potter's House of Toronto, Jesus First Assembly. Uh, I know that we are together in this as one, praying for healing, trusting that he will heal. And this is for you, my mother-in-law. We love you and we are praying for you. And if you are praying for that same thing right now, just type amen, just type I believe in the comments down below, and we will join you in prayer for whoever you are praying for. Believe, trust that God still heals. We see that, the evidence of it, clearly in scripture, clearly in history, and clearly among the first followers of Jesus Christ, and also the followers of Jesus Christ, even in 300 AD. I haven't researched in 400 AD, but I'm, I'm sure if I do, we will see that. And so type amen when we pray this, agree with us, Thank you, Ebro, for that. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for those watching this right now who are trusting in you for your healing power in Jesus' name, trusting that you are the great physician, trusting, Holy Spirit, that you care for those in our lives that are sick right now, that are hurting right now. And we pray, Lord God, that you would heal them in Jesus' name, that you would give them a touch in Jesus' name. We know, Lord God, that you are sovereign. We know, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Rapha, the healer of healers, Lord God. You are God, our healer. And we pray for healing for them in Jesus' name, from their, their head to their toes, that you would heal them and that you would be glorified in their healing, Lord God. We trust, Lord, that you've heard this prayer all of these people that are praying fervently for their loved ones, for themselves. We pray for that healing, Lord God, that you would grant that healing, that you would have mercy on your children and that we would trust in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, friends, we're going to go right into scripture now of Bible passages talking about healing. In Matthew 4, 23, we're going to go there right now. 4, 23. Read this. Jesus heals the sick. Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among people. Wow. We have Emily here. Good day, Pastor Vince. I believe in healing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes, we believe with you and we pray with you in Jesus' name. Jesus heals the sick. And if you look at this, every disease. Now, you know, some people will twist this and say, well, he will heal every time when I want him to heal. And we have to trust that God is sovereign. He is not a cosmic genie bottle. He is sovereign. He is God. He is God of the universe. And we have to trust that he will heal and his timing is always perfect. Remember Lazarus, right? And he raised him from the dead. He allowed him to die. And, and he allowed those around him to feel that pain, to cry. Remember, Jesus wept because Jesus feels the pain that you're going through. He understands what you're going through. He's the only one that fully comprehends the pain that you're going through. Maybe seeing a loved one hurt. Remember that Jesus feels that hurt and that he is with you in that hurt. Reading now in Matthew 8, 16 to 17. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Wow. Imagine Jesus went all over the place healing, and God still is all over the place today healing. Mark. 1, 34. And now this is Jesus healing. And I know some of, some of you will still think, okay, well, this is Jesus healing, right? This is Jesus healing. We're not Jesus. We're not Jesus. We're humans. We are followers of Jesus Christ. But remember that those 12 disciples also were given authority to heal. And remember that the 72 disciples were given authority to heal. And they did. And remember that the early church in Acts was healing. And remember the church in 180, 280, 380 we're all performing healing miracles in Jesus' name. And again, it is Jesus performing these. But in Mark 1.34, you see here, Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He, he also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. And so you see, Jesus is in full control. And in the situations that you are in, my friends, Jesus is in full control. I know it feels like sometimes it's out of control, but if there's one person that has it all under control, it is God. And if you would trust that God, if you would just put your faith in that God and surrender to that God, then you will have peace, my friends. You will have peace. And this is what we were talking about earlier. He sends out the 12. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. And Jesus did this with the 12 disciples. And then he says this in 7 and 8. I go with that right now. As you go proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, 
raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons freely. You have received freely. Give. And you see that ultimately that when we experience healing, it is for the glory of God. You know, in, um, in Acts 3, we're going to go to that right now. We see here that there's another healing miracle. And this happens. This is not Jesus anymore, right? This is the early church. Peter heals a lame beggar. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at them, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Remember that when we come to God in prayer, we expect, right? Just like in Psalms 5, when David came to God in prayer in the morning, he came expectant. He came expectant that God would answer. He came expectant that God would hear my prayer. For friends, he is a God that hears your prayer. You know that when you cry out to God, he hears your prayer. He hears your cry. He hears your voice. He is a big God. He is the creator of the universe. Yet he is so intimate that he will spend time to listen to your prayer, to listen to your cry. God loves you. And here you see this beggar coming at this gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg, hopeless, not knowing whether there would be enough food to eat, not not being able to even rely on his own legs. Somebody had to bring him there. And yet, when he saw Peter and John, he looked up and this is what he asked for. He, he asked expecting. And he just asked for money. Do you have any money? Do you have any alms? I'm just begging for the bare minimum. So the man gave his attention, expecting to get something from them. You know, when we come to God in prayer, expect, my friends, expect that God the God of this universe, the God that laid his life out for you, will answer your prayer. He is a good God. Six, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to them. You see, friends, when God brings healing into your life, brothers, sisters, when, when God brings healing into your life, it will bring him glory. It will bring him praise because the people will be amazed. They'll be amazed at what God has done and they will draw, God will draw them closer to him. Ultimately, that is our purpose. And you see here this man hopeless in this situation. And maybe you may be in a situation wondering, is this going to happen, God? Are, are you really going to heal? Are you really going to answer this prayer, God? You know, you just keep focusing on God. You keep just drawing closer to God. And this is why we're here today. Because we believe that God is alive. We believe that God is with us today. We believe that God hears our cries. God hears our prayers. And so you see that it continues here. And if you go to Acts 12, let's go there right now. The apostles heal many. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed. This reminds us of Jesus and his, his robe. The people were just after him, that if I could just get a touch of the robe of Jesus Christ, then maybe I will be healed. And so many were healed, like that lady who was bleeding for so many of those years. So many years. And maybe some of us have been waiting for that healing. And you see here crowds gathered also from the town around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits. And all of them were healed. So you see here, again, the early apostles still performing healing, still performing deliverance, casting out. 
And I just don't see any evidence at all using the most stringent exegesis and hermeneutic principles. You cannot see that this has stopped. And it's true historically. And that's why we have records in the church in 100 AD, 200 AD, 300 AD, 400 AD healing being performed. And somewhere along the way, the devil got in the church and convinced us that no, God doesn't heal anymore. My friends, he does. And you may be in a situation right now where you're praying for that. And we're praying together. We're praying with you. Now let's go to Acts 14, 8 to 10, 8 to 190, 8 to 10. Let's read this together. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked at him directly, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, stand up on your feet. And that man and jumped up and began to walk. Amen. Amen. Now, you see, Paul recognized that, hey, he, he had faith to be healed. Now, I'm not saying that you know, there's some people who I truly believe that have experienced this where they had faith that they would be healed. But for whatever reason, God didn't heal. And still, at the end of the day, you know, it would be for his glory ultimately. We don't know why. God is sovereign. There are times when he chooses not to. But I believe that there are times when he chooses to. And the least we could do is pray and ask God expectantly, asking him expectantly. Finally, let's go now to Acts 19, 11 to 12. This is a very fruitful discussion for those of you maybe just joining in now. We just talked about scriptural, scriptural evidence of God's healing. And then we talked about historical evidence of God's healing. And to summarize, we talked about how Jesus had a healing ministry. Actually, Jesus had a threefold ministry, healing, casting out demons, and preaching. And the disciples, the 12 that he sent out, had a threefold ministry, healing, casting out demons, and preaching. And then he sent out 72 disciples, and they had a threefold ministry healing, casting out demons, preaching. And so you see even the great commission, Jesus gave us a great commission, commanding them of these things. And then we see that great commission taking place in Acts. And you see the early believers in Acts, healing, casting out demons, and preaching. And then you see in 100 AD, evidence, historical evidence for that. In 200 AD, historical evidence for that. In 300 AD, historical evidence for that. And we can go on and on and on. And to this day, many of us are experiencing that as well, that God is a God that heals. In Acts 19, 11, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Now, this is where, you know, people can abuse this. Okay, so be careful that you, you watch something and say, hey, I'm selling, I'm gonna, they're, they're saying that they're gonna sell some handkerchief and if you buy it for $100, that somehow you're gonna get healed. Now, they're not the Apostle Paul. Again, I said in the beginning, you cannot bribe God for healing. God is the healer. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the great physician, and he will heal, and he will choose to heal when he will choose to heal. He is a sovereign God, but he's still active today, okay? And, and you see here that this is continuing to happen. And so let's now go to the epistles, because in 1 Corinthians 12, 9, we're talking about the gifts here. To another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit. Now, some of us have been given the gift of healing. Now, for whatever reason, when I pray for people, they get healed, right? And it's not me that's doing it. It's God that's doing it. So I recognize that in my ministry, God has given me the gift of healing. Now, will he heal every single time? I don't know. He is God. But I do know that I was on a shoot. We were in Calgary and I have a friend that was with us, a shooter, and he sprained his toe right before the shoot and he was limping and he was limping and as he was limping i said what's wrong he said i don't know something i must have twisted or something like that and we, we had a cup of coffee and i got down on my knees and i said here come here let me pray for it and we came down and right then and there i just laid hands on his ankle and we prayed for healing we prayed that god would heal him and so we went about our shoot it was a tough shoot going up and down mountains we thought that his ankle was getting was going to get worse but it turns out at the end of the shoot he was like it's good. It's all good. It's healed. And th this is just one instance. I could give you a hundred instances where God healed people. And so God does give this and there's no evidence hermeneutically using the best exegesis to suggest that God isn't healing today. And so I will stand for that truth because I see that truth time and time again, historically, scripturally, and also experientially. And so you see that here. And then, you know, we could go to 28 as well. 
And in 1 Corinthians 1 28 says, and God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Now, I'm not going to go into tongues here, okay, because this isn't a video about tongues, it's a video about healing. But right now, we see clearly evidence in the Gospels, in Acts, in the epistles now. And then now, let's go to James. And we talked about that, um, I think, earlier, right? This is James, half-brother of Jesus, and he's actually telling them, hey, are you guys sick? Call on the elders of the church. Pray over them. Anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. Who is the name of our Lord? Jesus Christ. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And so we see here that also possibly the sin can cause sickness. And we know that we can cause sickness in our souls. We know that sin can affect our lives and affect our family's lives. But we see here that there's a pairing for that here as well. Now, 1 Peter says this, 1 Peter 2, 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. Now, I understand that this is, isn't not talking about physical healing, right? This is a prophecy about how we are healed, we are spiritually healed, that now Jesus is that bridge now that we have. Now we can access God. He's the mediator so that we can access God because he took our sins on the cross and that we are saved by grace through faith, that we believe in Jesus Christ. We confess with our mouths that he is Lord. We repent of our sins. We turn away from our ways and we say, God, I will follow you. That yes, we need to have access to God. And so you see that God is, is active. And Paul, I mean, Peter talks about this right? He, he, he experienced this. Peter, remember Peter was the one with the biggest mouth, right? Peter was the one who walked on water. Peter was the one who, who, who cut off that soldier's uh, ear. Uh, Peter was the one who denied Jesus three times. And so Peter had many faults. Peter fell many times. Peter made a lot of mistakes, but God still used him. And maybe some of you are wondering, hey, can God use me? I'm not sure if God can use me. And the answer is yes, he can. And some of you are thinking, I don't know if God can use me. I've made too many mistakes. Yes, he can. Even someone who denied Jesus three times, Peter, God used to build his church. And so friends, God can use you wherever you are. And remember, at some point, Peter lost hope. He went back to his old life. He thought nothing was possible anymore. But Jesus came to him again. Is God seeking you to use you to bless others? Now, Psalms 103, 2 to 3 says this, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. So friends, as we wrap this up, I just want to conclude. Jesus had a threefold ministry. Healing was one of them. The 12 disciples had a threefold ministry. Healing was one of them. The 72 had a threefold ministry. Healing was one of them. When Jesus ascended, the early church in Acts had a threefold ministry. Healing was one of them. The early church in 100 AD had a threefold ministry. Healing was one of them. The church in 200 AD had a threefold ministry. Healing was one of them. The church in 300 AD had a threefold ministry. Healing was one of them. The church today has a threefold ministry, and healing is one of them. And so today, before we close, we are going to pray again for your families. And I want to pray specifically right now for my mother-in-law. And so if you will join us in that prayer, if you will say amen in, in the comments down and, and agree with us and say that I believe that Jesus heals again. Pray with us. Join us. And, and for those of you who are praying for healing, we want to pray for your families as well. We want to pray for your loved ones as well. And, and so join us in this prayer. As we close, we're going to pray and we're going to trust that God still heals today. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your healer. Thank you, God, that you are active. Thank you, God, that you are the great physician. Thank you, Lord, that you care. Thank you that you, you, you heal us of our diseases. And we lift up to you right now, my mother-in-law, Lord God, I pray that you would heal her. I pray that you would touch her, Lord God, that your hand, your healing touch would rest on her, that she would know that you are God, that she would know that you care, that she would know that you love her with a love that is everlasting, with a love that is indescribable, that with a love that is extravagant, and I pray, Father, for all those right now that are here, I pray, Father, that you would bring healing to them as well. I pray that you would bring healing to their loved ones, whatever it is that they're going through. 
whatever disease. I pray that you would bring healing from, from, from every part of their body, whatever it is. Trusting, Lord God, that you care. Trusting, Lord, that you are sovereign. Trusting, God, that you are today still healing and that our ministry is threefold and healing is one of those. And we pray by faith that we are healed. And we trust, Lord God, that you are our healer. Lord, if we lack faith, give us greater faith to believe, to believe and to trust. And then we pray this expectantly, Lord God, expectant that you will move, expectant that you are moving. That the things that we are worried about, the things that we are crying about, you are already at work, that you have already answered those prayers, that you already have solutions for those, that you already have a healing touch for those. And so we proclaim, Lord God, your death, your crucifixion on the cross, your burial, and your resurrection. We trust, Jesus, that you are alive and active, and we trust, Holy Spirit, that you are moving amongst us even now. We surrender our time with you. We thank you for all those that are with us today, and we pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's children say, amen, amen, amen. Well, friends, Thank you so much for uh, your comments. Thank you, Lord God, for all these people. And I pray that he would bless you. I, pr I pray that his face would shine upon you. And I pray that for those of you that are praying for healing and that are wondering, does God heal today? That your faith increased today. And so until next time, this is Pastor Vince Revo here at Man After God, signing off, reminding you to keep Jesus first. God bless you. We love you. And we will see you next time. Bye for now.